Amen. Hallelujah. You should give God a chance. You ought to give God a chance. Amen. We're in Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Amen. We're going to start at verse 35. Start at verse 35. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to take out something to write with, a notebook. I'm just going to give you one or two things to jot down. Borrow a pen from somebody or a scrap of paper. You can use your technology if you have technology. Amen. First thing I want you to do is, if you have a neighbor, shake them and tell them to wake up. Say this, say wake up. Shake the neighbor, say wake up. Amen. He's not going to be very long. Say that, say he's not going to be very long. Amen. We only have a little bit of time in this old year. Time don't wait for anybody. Uh, but you want to turn to Matthew 26 and 36, 26 and 36, actually. Um, take that paper, take a pen. You can use your technology. Um, you can open up your cell phone or whatever and write, write this down. Going further with God in the new year. Going further with God in the new year. Going further with God in the new year. Daydream. Kingston. Amen. Cardinals. Amen. Simone, Hannah, David Jr. Going further with God in the new year. Amen. Going further with God in the new year. That's the title. Now write this, Matthew 26 and 36. Matthew 26 and 36. Matthew 26 and verse 36. Amen. Let me move forward. Okay. Um, when you get Matthew 26 and 36, go ahead and stand. I think I'm going to read it just to move myself forward. Just uh, about four or five verses here. When you get Matthew 26 and 36, everybody stand. You can all stand once you get it. Once you get the text, you can stand. Come on, come on. Get with me, brother. Amen. That's my guy there. I don't want to be messing with him. Um, Peter said unto him, though I should die. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I said, well, I'm already reading 35. Let me keep going. Though I should die with thee, Yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, also said all of the disciples. Verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. That's the, Hebrew, the, uh, the Greek word. It's actually in Hebrew. It stands for uh, oil. It's a place where, uh, where uh, oil was taking place and the oil was... Uh, Olive, where olive oil was made and said to the disciples sit ye here while I go and pray yonder and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy then he took, said unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. This is Jesus talking. Tarry ye here. Tarry, you know, the King James means wait. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Verse 39. And this is my main verse. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, what is thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples 
and findeth them asleep. And said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You can be seated in the presence of God. This is right before Christ was about to be crucified. And the human side of Jesus was really in agony because he knew that he had to die. He knew that it was necessary that he should die. And his heart was heavy. And he wanted the disciples to be there praying with them, but they fell asleep. Now, verse 39 says that he went a little farther. And that's related to our title, Going Further with God in the New Year. Going further with God in the New Year. Um, I had an opportunity during COVID-19 to travel to London, London, England. I went to Birmingham, I went to a, a college in Warwick, England, outside of Birmingham, and I went and had a chance to take a train to London during COVID-19. And in the process, I went over there to, to speak at a theological conference, and I had a wonderful time. It was a blessing. Everything went very well. But on the way back, I went to the airport, and it was a woman, she was an African-American woman too, but she was from, from England. She had an English, British accent. I noticed in the airport line, she was going around, taking people's names and writing stuff down. She was going around, writing things down, asking people questions. And I wasn't concerned because in my mind, I had all my paperwork together. I had all my COVID shots. I remember they used to ask you for a card too, like when you went places, you had to show them your card. I had all my COVID shots. I had been tested and I didn't have any COVID-19. But at some point, the woman came up to me and was asking me questions. I still was not concerned because I thought I had all my paperwork together. It turns out that in England, they wanted you to have a recent COVID test that day, showing that you were, not, you were negative, your results were negative, and that you did not, in fact, have COVID. I'm like, I already had plenty of shots. I've already been tested. So they said, no, you need one for today. You should have got one while you were in London. And, which nobody ever tell you. She got one in London, and then we can see that paperwork. And so, nevertheless, I was, it was four, it was, my flight was early. It was like four or five o'clock in the morning. Wasn't nothing open in London. Even if I was in Cincinnati and on the hill, would nothing have been over. <laughs> and so I was afraid and frightened. I was in another country, they talk funny, talk like this. Sir, could I help you? Sir, could I help you? And it's so thick, you can't even tell what they're saying. <laughs> then they didn't understand me when my ghetto is like, uh, can I get some help over here? Excuse me, what did you say, sir? Like, oh, can you help me? You trying to talk all proper, it wasn't working. You take them out of the hood, you can't take the hood out of them. <laughs> we couldn't understand each other. And I'm stuck and scared. My family was expecting me that day. I was gonna fly all day and, and be back in Cincinnati that evening. And they was like, not today. <laughs> they made me wait until 8.30. I had to sit in the London airport till 8.30. My phone wasn't working either, right? till 8.30, four hours, and then I had to take the test, hope that it was positive. Well, negative, thank you, thank you. <laughs> hope it was negative, hope that I didn't have COVID-19, basically. And then they had to write all this stuff down to demonstrate, to certify that I didn't have it. 
So I waited in the line, paid a bunch of money for a test I really didn't want or need. A bunch more money. It was a big, big money scam. They're doing the same thing over there in London that they're doing over here, getting people money. Ain't nothing different. And they uh, charged me a bunch of money. I was, thankfully, um, negative, but it was a lady before me. They, about two or three people, they was getting them, stroking them, like, no, positive. <laughs> <laughs> I was so scared that like the few people before me was had COVID. They was crying, stuck over there. And I was like, I'm, I'm praying, Terry. I'm talking about Terry. <laughs> Lord help me, Jesus. Lord, don't let me have this COVID-19. I ain't trying to get stuck in nothing. And they was keeping people over there for a week or like two weeks. I was so scared. And so, come to find out I didn't have it. And then I missed my flight. Because my flight was at like 5 that morning. So I had to get another flight. The only flight they had was one that went all over Europe before it went back to Ohio. <laughs> and every time I got on another plane, we went a little further into Europe. <laughs> I went a little deeper into Europe. I was in London, then I was in Amsterdam, and I was in Holland for like 10 hours, and then I went a little further. I'm thinking about our scripture. Yeah. Then I went to Barcelona, Spain. That was fun. I was in Spain for like 10 hours. And dude, he was kind of like a brother. He spoke English. He was a guy from Spain. He was cool. The Uber driver, he took me all over Barcelona. We was chilling. But I wanted to go back home. And just when it seemed like I went to the end of the earth, <laughs> a flight started going back to the next one go to New York. I, would, I kid you not, I was transferring all over the earth. Nice, nice way to see the world. <laughs> and I thought about this scripture as I was going into deeper, deeper, uncharted territory. I didn't know where, I had never been to Holland. And the funniest talk of people are in Holland. Is it either Holland or, uh, what's the other one that I say? Amsterdam. I think that's the same, but yeah. I'm getting mixed up. But one, they talk so funny. They talk, good morning. <laughs> that means good morning. <laughs> good morning. I'm like, that's, I didn't want to say it, but I wanted to say, y'all talk really weird. She's probably like, so do you. Where are you from? <laughs> um, but the further I got into the, my journey, I got more nervous. But I knew that I was going home. And so that's how the process is with God. This scripture says, well, he went a little further. This is Jesus. He started praying with the disciples in verse 20, 39. I'm almost done. Um, he started praying in verse 39. Before that, he started praying. Because the Bible says in verse 38, Jesus said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even, even unto death. Share ye here, tear ye here and watch with me. He told the disciples, stay right here, because they was also watching for their back, but they went up there and pray. And Jesus went to a deeper part in the Garden of Gethsemane, the place of oil, which represents the Holy Ghost, and he fell on his face in prayer. He went further into another part so he could get closer to God. And that's what we have to do. As I was going on my journey, I knew I was going home, but I was going into uncharted territory. Barcelona, Spain, Amsterdam. I can't honestly remember, is that a city or, I think Amsterdam's a city. Uh, Holland, my, but my favorite time was eating breakfast in Spain. They got some good breakfast over there. They serious about their breakfast. Um, but I was going into, it was a good thing, it was a good thing, but I struggled and I was afraid because I didn't know what I was getting into. That's how faith is. I, I knew that I was safe traveling all over Europe. I felt good about it because I was ultimately heading back to Ohio. But there was some uncertainty. And so what God is saying to us and to you in 2024, that he wants to push you further. And it's gonna be uncertain. And I hear the Lord speaking this very thing to me as we speak right now. It's going to be some uncertainty, but God has got you. 
He's going to be pushing you out of your comfort zone. Hallelujah. He's going to be using you in capacities that you didn't expect to be used in, but you have to be obedient. He ain't going to just use you in your mess. He's going to help you get that thing right if you want to change. If you want to change, it ain't going to be easy. But he's going to push you out of your comfort zone. You're going to go a little further. If you don't go a little further, he can't really use you. In Jesus in the story, he had to, to go to a different part of the garden so that he can do pray even more. He had some things he wanted to talk to his father about. And the Bible says he went a little further. And his disciples didn't get it around him. They fell asleep like some of us. They went to sleep. There was the Son of God praying, going further with his father, and they sleep. Like my daughter goes. Yeah, Matt, Maddie be making mimic in the cartoon. She be going. She said, where she learned that? But they was over there asleep. The Son of God in the place of oil, the Garden of Gethsemane, going deeper, going further, and they sleep. And Jesus seemed frustrated. In verse, in verse um, 40, he says, the end of it, could you not wash with me one hour? The minister was praying that yesterday. I heard him praying that. And he's saying that to us. Can you not stick with me? Can you not hold on? And then he even said in verse 41, Watch and pray that she enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Your flesh is going to be working against you. It's going to be people pulling you back out into the world. The minute you get home sometimes, there's going to be people trying to offer you stuff that you know you made a commitment to God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The flesh is going to be weak, but the spirit is willing. Let your spirit be willing. Be willing to go closer to God. Be willing to draw closer to Him. Amen. Be willing to go further in 2024. I don't know about you, but I want more of God in 2024. I'm excited about Jesus today. Hallelujah. I know it ain't going to always be easy. I know it ain't going to always feel good. I know I'm not going to always be understand what's going on like my trip to Europe. I don't know what the people were saying. They're trying to explain stuff to me. I got yelled at. I was taking pictures in the airport because I was in another country. And dude yelled at me in his language like, no, no photos, no photos. Like, man, I barely even understand you. I didn't see the sign. <laughs> it's going to be things in your life that you're not going to understand. But, but, but God is going to be in it if you be obedient. So in 2024, let's go further with God. Amen. And then let us stand for prayer. I'm, 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 I'm intentionally being short. We're in overtime. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word, the call to go further. Each and every person in here, from the oldest to the youngest, that you're calling us to go further in you. Show us the path of righteousness. Show us how to move forward. Sometimes we get stuck by our own self by our own attitude, by our own hangups, and you can't use us or bless us because we stuck in that. We stuck in religion. We stuck in tradition. Lord, deal with our hearts today, each and every person today, Lord, as we move forward into the end of this new year, as we move to the prayer and the watch services, that you would speak to our hearts and speak that word to us, that we can continue to move forward in you so you can use us. Bless everybody together. There's somebody that's going through something even right now. Hallelujah. We ask that you just remove the enemy out of their life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Replace it with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Take the wicked spirits and the evil spirits that's influencing us and replace it with God's spirit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands today. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing that song, Sister Chapman. You can be seated in the presence of God. You brought me over for every trial. Let's get an offering. Deacons and ministers.